Time to say goodbye. It's been good, KLR. It's been real good. All right, so there she is. Really looks like it's in pretty darn good shape. Nice and clean. I'll take it if you want to trade. Yeah, yeah I like it a lot. All right, well, let's do some paperwork, I suppose, huh? excited about this bike. This is going to be fun. I'm excited about life right now. Life is good. And I have a lot of you guys to thank for it. I appreciate you guys sticking with me and subscribing and watching and supporting and I'm a lucky guy. Thank you guys. Hopefully I can return the favor and put out some good content that you guys will enjoy. I don't know if you guys remember, but last time I was talking about how I rode my Gen 2 KLR home after I bought it on the same road. I think that spot I just passed was the spot that I was talking about when I said the uh, uh, when the, all the cans blew out of somebody's trailer in front of me that I had to avoid. I'm pretty sure that was the spot. Just kind of had a bit of a flashback. Either that or it was somewhere else and I'm totally wrong. Oh, my earbud just fell out of my ear. Hopefully that stays in my helmet. It's strange. This thing just like hums along like almost silent and motionless and then you hit the gas and it's like something just shakes loose in there and it's it's like turns it into a different bike i feel like the ergonomics of this feel very different than both the klr and the xr i guess maybe i'll have to get back on the xr and see maybe it's just different from the klr i mean obviously it is i mean the pegs definitely feel much higher like i said earlier i mean i don't feel like i'm sitting down in the bike like I would on the KLR. I don't know, the, the bars feel like they're in a better spot than they were on the XR. And I guess on the way home, like like I had mentioned, the bars were just kind of rolled back too far for my liking. I don't know if that's really just it, that these aren't. I mean, it seems like they definitely could be rolled forward even a little bit more, so I don't know. I guess it must just be the more the frame and, and, and where the, the triple tree and forks actually are, but it really... I don't know, it just feels good, and that's kind of what I noticed when I hopped on Jason's to test ride it. They just, I don't know, they just feel good. It's just, and I mean, I guess obviously if you're a different frame size than me, uh, I'm 5'10", uh, about 155, 160 pounds, and I've got a 31 inch inseam. And for me, I don't know, this bike just, it's one of the very few bikes I think that I've got on and just felt like it fit me, I guess. And I think I will still do stuff with the bars eventually. I've got a pretty pretty big uh, plan for this bike, actually. Possibly even bigger than the XR, I suppose. Uh, but I think for now, at least to begin with, we're just going to kind of leave it stock and see how things go with the XR build and uh, just kind of ride this sort of alongside it and test it. Might be kind of interesting to see you know, how my mods on that bike make me change my mind about this bike and kind of vice versa. So we'll see how that goes, and uh, we've got some other stuff kind of in the works that might kind of uh, take up some time, but I think should be hopefully interesting and fun. I don't know what the heck I'm going to do about the 701. I feel really bad about it. I, it's such a great bike, but it just, I don't know, it doesn't seem to bring in the views like like these, these bikes do, uh, which obviously, I mean, I need. I, and I, I love that bike, that 701. I mean, if it wasn't for the reliability questions and issues, or potential for issues, I mean, that, that that's a hard bike to beat, honestly. And, I mean, I know a lot of you guys say that, you know, oh, they're so expensive, but I picked mine up for not too much more than what a DR or an XR is new. So, I mean, obviously it's got some miles on it, but still a heck of a bike. I think some of you are interested to see some, some comparisons, so it'll be worth keeping for that, but I don't know. I'm just not sure what I'm going to do about that one. Four bikes is kind of a lot. And I guess for any of you that are, are wondering why I would decide to uh, trade a KLR for a DR650 when I already have an XR650 and a Husqvarna 701 and a TW200, uh, I decided that if I want to be a professional 
YouTuber and a uh, not a not a moto vlogger. I came up with a word for it now. Not moto journalist. That's already a word. Anyways, I decided if I'm gonna be a professional YouTuber and make dual sport motorcycle content, then I should probably be a professional YouTuber and buy some motorcycles and make some motorcycle content. So that's what we're gonna do. And look at that, no eagle, but we got a red tail hawk. Oh yeah. I love this world and this life. What a cool place. I am noticing that all I can really see in the mirrors is my elbows. So maybe that'll have to change. Other than that though, honestly, I don't I don't find too many faults with this bike. This this is a nice bike to ride. Now that it's warmed up a little bit, even at near 60, wind protection, lack of wind protection doesn't really bother me, I don't think. Windy, but what do you expect? I feel like the roll-on power at 60 almost almost seems better than the XR. That can't be. I wonder if it's just because my one earplug fell out, and it's hopefully still in my helmet, and the other one's about to fall out. So hopefully that's that's all it is. I mean, not hopefully. I just thought the XR was what the heck? I just thought the XR was gonna be more extreme all the way through, but maybe not. This doesn't seem like doesn't seem like she's down on power at high speed at all. That's for sure. I think it definitely feels like the XR, at least so far anyways, has more sort of low end power when you're going slow, but I mean, doing 50 and 60? I don't know, maybe it just seems loud, but I don't know. Definitely seems like it's got some takeoff power. I didn't expect that. I was just gonna say what I really should have done is taken the XR out here, but of course that really wouldn't work so well for the whole trade situation. <laughs> but it would be good to jump right from one to the other, but I'm actually gonna jump right from the KLR to this to the XR, because I gotta film something when I get home on the XR for a different video. That should be an interesting day. Oh yeah, that front end's got some dive to it. <laughs> More so than the XR, which, I mean, I guess this has got 6,000 miles on it, where that's not even got 1,000 on it yet, so I suppose that's, I don't know, maybe something to do with the fact that this has been broke in a little bit, but I kind of don't think so. I think the XR, again, is just maybe a little bit more aggressive. I do definitely like that this is a little bit closer to the ground. Not quite as much as the KLR, of course. Uh-oh. Ugh. Seems like even if you park on a slight hill, she'll still lean over. That is a good-looking bike. I was so focused on what was going on. I hardly even got to drink it all in, but check it all out. We've got a skid plate on here. I don't know if that's a Suzuki one or what that is. Uh, we've got some protection for that side. I think we've got case protector on the other side here too. Looks like RTV done. I don't know what kind those are. Warp 9 lever, stock pegs. D-Sports front and rear. Uh, pro, -taper, pro Taper grips. The, I don't know which deflex these are. Maybe a little bit older ones. Looks like they fit just fine. Well, I guess he said he swapped the lever out. But yeah, there she is. The new DR650, finally. I've been waiting a bit for one of these, huh? I bet some of you guys are so happy right now. Not as happy as me, though. Oh, this is cool. Well, let's see, hopefully we can find that earbud. Oh, yeah, there it is. Still there. Oh, the other one's rattling around, come on. Ugh. Dang it. Now, of course, attached where to there. I think that stream that we just passed should be right here. Could we take a little bit of a look around here? Oh, I should have brought my fishing pole. 
you guys go fishing on your bikes? It's been a while since I've done it, but I used to do it quite a bit. I always had a pole with me. Oh! Sorry, duck! Looks like the water's maybe a little higher than usual. Better be careful. That'd be a cold ride home if it fell in there. <laughs> I always like finding spots like this along the road. You always got to keep an eye out for those county gates. A lot of good stuff behind them. All right, DR. Let's go home. Here's your title. What do I do with your keys? Oh, that's my keys. One of these pockets. <laughs> Here we go. She sounds eager. Eager and happy. That's how I would describe the DR650 sound. She's got some bark though too. Oh yeah. Woohoo! I'm not letting the shift lever down enough. I think I'm just kind of not used to where that, that thing is on here. I think I've done that a couple times or I didn't drop it enough before I tried to shift again. Oops. She takes off pretty good though. That was, I mean, maybe not my best time, but basically flat out. So the guy that this bike belonged to just this morning uh, actually is a uh, previous KLR 650 owner. He had a uh, 2018, I think he said it was, a while back. Uh, and then he just uh, acquired another bike similar to this from his dad, I believe he said, and uh, said he didn't really need this and uh, it kind of always wanted to know what the uh, the new Gen 3 felt like compared to his Gen 2, so now he's on a Gen 3! A Gen 3 with the, uh, the Swanky Cat package, I suppose, or the Tusk package, <laughs> the Tusk edition. Swanky Cat edition? I have actually always kind of thought that that would be a neat thing ever since I kind of started building uh, that first Gen 2 uh, to basically, I mean, I guess kind of do what I've been doing, just buy bikes, more or less in stock condition. You know, maybe a few upgrades here and there, it's always nice, especially when you've got lots of projects going, but basically buy them, uh, ride them, figure out, you know, what I would like to change about them and kind of slowly change them. And then when it's time to move on to something else, sell it to somebody that'll really appreciate it and that can enjoy it and I think it's pretty awesome that he's somebody that's actually seen the videos so who knows maybe you guys will be watching along for a couple of years and then one of you will be on this or the XR or the 701 or TW and I think honestly that is the way to go and I know a lot of you you know get attached to the KLR and I think some of you have figured out by now that just because I sell a KLR doesn't mean that I won't ever buy another one and I have thought about comparing or buying and comparing the, I guess, more comparable uh, KLR, being the Gen 1, or the, uh, maybe even a KLX 650 uh, to these, because, I mean, really, that's the, the closest green-blooded 600 or uh, big board dual sport, where, I mean, the, the bike that we were just on this morning, I mean, that's, that's an entirely different animal. That's really an adventure bike. Where this thing, it's not yet. It might be, I guess, someday, but for now, she's just a dual sport. There's nothing wrong with that. I like my dual sports. And I was actually telling the, the guy that I got this from uh, just today that at one point in time, I really thought I was gonna be you know, going to the big, powerful, super crazy bikes like the Tenere 700, big, you know, real adventure bikes. But honestly, I mean, that's that's just not me. I'm, I'm a, a cheapskate dual sport guy, and I think I always will be. And to try to, to, try to fit into the, the adventure world, I think is just something that I didn't want and you know what wasn't gonna happen anyway so I think I think this is the right move for me and not to say that I'll never try an adventure bike again but there's just something I think that that really clicks with me with a, a dual sport seems like you guys are excited about it too so I'm pretty happy about that you guys like crows I always see a big bird and like oh what is that and like, oh it's just a crow crows are kind of cool and they're smart not that that has anything to do with the dr650 but you know what is with, with the date of the... Wow, I can't even talk. What's with my voice and my head and my brain? What is with the cage cluster on here? Like, it's thinking about rolling over, but it's not quite sure. <laughs> I've now realized that when I smile and laugh, it slowly works the earbuds out of my ears. Also realizing that I didn't turn any music on. How about you guys? Music actually makes me feel better and, like, warmer on a bike. I don't know. I guess it just gives me something else to focus on when you're on a cold ride. I swear, this thing goes from, like, washing machine... 
the dirt bike in with just the twist of a throttle. We're at 60 here. How does that feel for cruising speed? If I'm off the throttle pretty darn smooth. And that was fourth gear. <laughs> so similar to the uh, XR650 and the 701, this bike definitely has a bigger range than bikes like the DRZ400 and the KLR650, which honestly, I mean, and I guess I kind of forgot about all this until now, but if you guys are unaware, this is, I mean, not this specific one, I think it was black and white, I believe, but this bike, the DR650, is the bike that I almost ended up on instead of that first Gen 2 KLR650. And like I said last time, it's interesting to think about what would have happened if I would have gone that route to begin with and where I'd be. Honestly, I think the KLR helped me out a lot to begin with just because of its, I don't know, cult following, I guess. Not that these don't have that, but it seems like the KLR is maybe a little bit bigger. But uh, I guess I guess that could be wrong. I'll, I'll figure that out in a bit, I suppose. But when I had that DRZ400, I wanted something that could basically do you know what I'm doing today. Take a long trip at you know 60 miles an hour comfortably, and I wanted to be able to enjoy the corners and stuff where I couldn't with the DRZ400. So I was thinking I was going to buy one of these. Had one all lined up to buy, and then decided ah that wind protection on the KLR looks like it'll be worth it. Maybe I'll give that a shot first, and I could take it off and just put a regular headlight on it if I don't like it. <laughs> then came the Tenere and the Gen 3 KLR, and now finally I got my DR650, and I'm happy. This does, I don't know, it seems more comfy than the XR to begin with for some reason. I think maybe that's just the seat, and actually, now that I say that, I know it is. And not so much even, like, the shape, but almost the angle. There's, like, a very specific spot you can sit on sit on, on the XR, where this, this is more of, like, a long bench seat. And it does have a, kind of a nice, I guess, motocross position to sit in, way up at the front where you can hug the tank. But when you go to slide back, there's not as much of an incline to kind of climb up. And I guess maybe that's just the way that that C-Concept seat is cut on the XR that I've got. And maybe it's just the way that the, the C-Concept seat on here is, but I do like it. Maybe the bars are just a little bit higher compared to the seat too, I don't know. And it could even honestly be where your feet are. I don't really think about that that much, but the location of the pegs relative to the seat height and you know forward and backward definitely can adjust you know where where your pelvis and your back and stuff is and if you guys haven't heard me whine about it before I uh, smashed myself into uh, the side of Granite Peak which is our ski hill uh, after I slipped trying to do a 360 off of a big jump back when I thought I was Superman on a snowboard and uh, nearly nearly probably broke my neck and back went to the hospital on a backboard uh, but but anyway uh, my back has never really been the same since then so that's why I'm a little finicky about handlebar position and seats and that sort of thing but I've got to say this isn't bad I'm actually incredible I mean I guess we're all incredibly lucky to be alive but I think me more so than most I I haven't really thought about it and I think a lot of times I put it out of my head but there have been I mean a lot of times that I think I got very lucky I mean even just the uh, the gen 2 KLR crash somebody's looking out for me is what it is I shouldn't say lucky I don't know that luck exists necessarily chance maybe but I don't even know if that's true I guess I don't know how that all works, but somebody's looking out for me, I think, and I definitely appreciate that. And I appreciate this whole world, man, and this life. I couldn't be much happier. I would really like one of those. <laughs> but other than that, we're pretty much good. I'm, I'm a happy dude. Turn my MSR gloves all the way up here. When we took the XR home, I had the more aggressive set on. These are the slightly less of, uh, intense, less protected ones. And they definitely feel more comfortable see what they do for me for heat now that, my, now that I let my hands get too cold. Oh yeah, I can feel them heating up now. That's nice. It's also warmed up a bit, but I'm sure my, my new buddy on my on my old KLR there is probably enjoying all his wind protection and the, uh, the heated grips or the grip heaters on there. <laughs> So I'm interested to hear what do you guys think that I should do with this bike and is there anything specifically that I need to look out for? Does this have a, a doohickey or a, a thermobob mod that needs to be done? Something similar. I, I think I know a bit about these from uh, borrowing uh, Jason Jason's research and I think that being a 2018 there shouldn't be too much that i have to do to this thing other than ride it but maybe you guys can tell me down in the comments if 
there's anything that I don't know about. Oh, and if you're wondering what the white lines on the road are for, <laughs> are from, they uh, they go and spray something in lines like that down the road to uh, to prepare for a winter storm because it's supposed to be freezing rain and snow tonight and tomorrow, I think. So I think my shoulders and my back would be happier if these bars were kind of up there about. But other than that, man, this bike just feels good. I think there are, you know, of course, a, a probably a fairly large select group that really do love these big board dual sport dinosaurs, but I'm, I'm kind of confused and I guess surprised that they're not more popular than they are. I mean, everybody's got a DRZ 400. I mean, most of the time, supermotos, of course, but you know, I mean, the, people are excited about the KL, KLX 300, the, the CRFs. But, I mean, I guess those, those bikes definitely have their purpose and their place. You know, not everybody wants a giant dual sport, but Man, I mean, these are, they're just so versatile. I mean, sure, they're a little heavier, but you can do just as much, if not way more than a DRZ. I don't know. I don't get why these bikes never took off, I guess. And I suppose maybe they did. Maybe the the crowd that follows them just isn't quite as loud as the, the DRZ 400, or maybe once people buy them, they just keep them, and that's why you don't see as many of them for sale. One more test left, and that's the highway. That will be an interesting one. There it is, the big highway. Still working, it's a good sign. All right, let's go. Yeah, there it was again. <laughs> Not putting my foot down enough. <laughs> More than enough power to get me there. And yeah, it, it feels like I'm lugging it. <laughs> yeah, fourth, fourth almost, fourth at 70 almost feels like the KLR in fifth at 70. I mean, obviously that could just be way, the way that the, the vibrations kind of come through the bike. But man, that feels different. I, I cannot believe how different that is. How is this a better bike on the highway than the KLR from, from a motor and, and drivetrain standpoint? That seems like such a, a huge miss for the KLR. I mean, not like it's impossible, it's just... I don't know. It's probably all in your head and it doesn't even matter, so it's silly to even worry about it, but I don't think the KLR ever needed a six gear. I think it just needed a better fifth, a higher fifth. The D-Sports on the highway on this definitely don't feel anywhere near like they did on the KLR, so I think it was just the KLR itself. I mean, maybe the extra weight on the tires did that too, but I'm kind of surprised. It feels solid at 70. It's going to be a fun bike gonna be a fun build too. I hope you guys are excited. I sure am. Let's go see what this thing looks like next to the XR 650L. Hello there XR. Oh, I brought you home a new friend. Whoops. I just kicked my 360 camera. Sorry 360. Now look at those two. What a happy pair. I have to say this bike, it's a lot it's not the same as this bike, of course. They're, they're very different. But it it reminds me a bit more of this bike and has a lot more of its own type of attitude. And that's what I said kind of about this bike when I first got on it, is that it just felt... Why am I doing it like this? Probably because I can't turn it all the way around, can I? Oops. 
There we go. Now, what was I saying? The XR definitely, I mean, is a very intense feeling bike. It, you know, obviously has the high seat height, the high ground clearance. I mean, it, it very much feels like a motocross bike. Where this bike, I mean, it, it feels a little bit less intense in that way. But, I mean, both of them still have the same kind of, I don't know, I guess just big bore brappy attitude, maybe, I, I guess is what it is. It's not the same attitude, but it, it's it's similar, or adjacent anyways, and... Oh man, I can't. I can't wait to put more miles on these things. The DR definitely makes the XR look a bit old though, doesn't it? <laughs> definitely need an updated headlight, updated cowl, and uh, that fender over there. I think that'll help a bit, but... Oh boy, these are cool looking bikes. And this is what I mean about the tires looking aggressive. Look at those D-Sports compared to the stock Bridgestones on there. Now, which bike looks like it's ready for some off-road action? That one definitely looks meaner. Ugh. Hands are sweaty. If you guys want to see the builds that I have planned and the tests that I have planned for these bikes, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you guys watching along. Thanks. Take care. Stay safe. Stay swanky. Get out. Enjoy the beautiful world. Any chance you get.